these are five foot T posts and for this uh, configuration of fence that we're installing today we need to sink them 18 inches below ground so so Russ is just marking 18 inches and uh, we'll stop pounding when that mark gets to the top of the or at the original grade we're using a piece of uh, PZDC pipe to uh, to mark the distance between the posts and then just hand hand pound each post The T-post should be located in the center of the trench, so there's room to insert the, the barrier material on either side. So for this configuration we're using E-Fence 40, which is 40 inches width. Uh, we also intend to put a climber barrier into this uh, configuration, and you can see at the, uh, near the bottom, in this case, the climber barrier crease has been put in there, which makes it easier to bend the climber barrier crease and we'll show you how to do that. Um, we mark the rolls with an X. The X indicates what side goes into the ground. Just make it a little bit easier when you're moving rolls around to orient them properly. And uh, we're going to install this fence away from the construction side. So the construction side is off to the left in this picture. We're going to put the fence on the right side of the post. That's going to be the sensitive habitat. We don't want the posts on the side of the area that we're trying to protect because it could allow the animals uh, some leverage to climb. Um, the other thing that Russ likes to do is uh, on these T-posts, he likes to point the rough side of the, the side with the nipples towards the construction side and the smooth side towards the uh, habitat. That's uh, the fence. So the fence slides in there easily, um, just a little bit easier to work. Uh, not a big difference if you get the, the post uh, oriented backwards, but it's just a, a slight aid to uh, installation speed. So to make it a little bit easier to move these rolls around, these rolls weigh about 65 pounds. Um, Russ uses a, a six foot dowel, and uh, so it's easier for two guys to carry it and locate it to the correct position. The next step is just to roll it out. So the next step is to put the climber barrier crease in place. Um, again, that, that mark that mark is there from the, uh, the thermal crease and uh, one person out in front just kind of bends it, the next person slides along and gives it a good crease so that when we hang the fence, the, uh, the crease is already in place. For the purpose of this video, we're going to cut uh, sort of in between two posts um, artificially because uh, we want to show how to splice the two segments together. Uh, this is, uh, we're just doing a 45 foot installation here. Next step is to hang the fence, insert it into the trench. And this is uh, usually easy to do with a 100 foot section with three, three people you can usually get it up. The fence is very flexible so that you know, the, the further end of the fence might flop down a little bit, but at this point, you start tying it with zip ties, plastic zip ties right at the climber barrier crease, right at the top, leave room for that crease to bend down, and then Russ will put another zip tie about halfway down, or as far as his arms can reach, really. You don't want to have a person on both sides of the fence feeding zip ties to each other. Or minimize that as much as possible so if one person can do it. Just the length of the arms is enough. And then when Russ uh, hangs the fence, he uh, pushes, back fills the soil right there at that point so it doesn't kick out while they're working on the rest of the fence. So we do that at every single post. And then after that's completed, we uh, get on to the next step. So the second section is going up. What you want to do is make sure you overlap at least eight inches. Um, Russ is going to just do the initial part of the uh, seam. And we'll come back and show you the rest of it in a bit. This, uh, what he does is just to hold it in place as he puts a couple of zip ties through at the top. And uh, 
after we after we backfill the trench, then we come back and finish the seam. It's important that there's no gaps there for uh, the critters to get through. And then they continue with the remainder of this installation, tying it to the post with a couple of couple of ties. We're using zip ties for this installation. Zip ties are great for uh, a fence that has to stay in place for a couple of years. If the fence has to be in place for two years or longer, we always recommend to use wire ties. Just eight inch cut pieces of wire work great. Let's say 16 gauge for the T-post and then you can use a lighter gauge for sewing up the, uh, the seams, which we'll show. Okay, we manufacture, we make this wire in um, 10 pound spools, which makes it easier for the installers to uh, deploy. And uh, if you'll notice, there's a label on the, on the spool and that label is placed at the at the end of the spool, which is our starting point. So that, that piece that Russ just pulled out is the starting point. Um, and it's always a good idea to take the other end, you can find it sticking out somewhere, and, and bend it or mark it in some way so that when you're moving down the line and you're continuing to uh, spool off the wire, there's no confusion about what the starting point is. These uh, wire ties need to be snipped, and uh, then you're good to go. So what we do is uh, place the wire at the very top corner of the climber barrier and at the very first post wrap it a couple times and then uh, Russ will tie it tight around the, uh, he'll wrap it around the, uh, the guide wire and then just pull it hand tight. We don't have to tension it any more than that, just pull it hand tight between the posts, wrap it one time at each post and then move on to the next post. If for some reason that spool gets all tangled up, it's not a problem to cut it. And at that point, just wrap it three times around the post, twice or three times around the post, and then start the next one and uh, continue on that way. And a good method at the, uh, when you get to a T post where the fence stops and there's still plenty more to install, just hang the wire on the last T post there until you're ready to start installing more fence. Okay, the next step is to put on a couple of wire accessories. One is the uh, climber barrier bracket. This goes over the top and keeps the climber barrier in place so the wind doesn't blow it up. And this is the guide wire clip. It, it uh, pushes through the E-fence and then crimps to the guide wire and it keeps, uh, it keeps the uh, tension uh, you know, to the fence so that uh, when it's blowing in the wind, the, the fence is able to move and absorb some of that energy, but um, the fence stays in place. The guy, guy wire holds it there. So we're gonna go ahead and start putting those on. This goes every three feet. Both of these go every three feet. And in fact, you can put these in the same location. And Russ is gonna show you his method. So Russ's method here, since we're putting these uh, basically three feet or a meter apart, Russ uh, just calibrates his step so that he knows the distance, what the distance should be, so that he doesn't have to keep constantly measuring. Um, then these uh, these clips are pushed through the fence and just crimped off. This is a nice tool. This wire cutter actually is a nice tool for doing that. It's quick, and you want to crimp those tight enough so that the wind doesn't knock them loose. That's done pretty well. So we just put one of those every three feet. So we put those guide wire clips right at the climber barrier crease, right underneath the crease, so that when this gets creased down, it's, it's down below. Next step is to install the climber barrier bracket, and the climber barrier brackets go right next to the guide wire bracket, so you don't really have to measure these out. Just put, you know, within a few inches of the, the uh, guide wire bracket. So what Russ does is he measures down from the top of the fence, just using the length, the opening, portion of that bracket so he knows exactly where to insert the bottom section and then goes over the top and then since this side is flexible it's easy to put this side in on the short flat and that's it and you want to make sure that this bracket that there's very little clearance here you want this apex to be as close as possible to the crease of the climber barrier Okay, 
Okay, the next step, the next step is to backfill the trench, and the trench here is in the shade. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, there's some trench spoils along the edge of the trench here, and what we want to do is start backfilling on the the fence side first. What you want to do is push the fence up against the post, and then backfill on the other side. So uh, he's going to go ahead and start backfilling. What you want to do is make sure that there's no gaps or places, tunneling opportunities for, for the critters. You can also use, if you've got a, a right-on trencher with a, a blade and a good operator, you can also use the blade of the trencher to push the spoils back into the trench. Got to make sure the operator's a good one though, because one little mistake can tear the fence. And then Russ is on this side just making sure that the trench is uh, completed. Okay, so the next step, one of the final steps, is to tie the seams together. You want to make sure that there's no gaps at all for a snake or a salamander to get through. Use 18 gauge galvanized wire, it's pretty pliable, easy to manipulate. Take about a, let's say a three and a half foot piece or something for a 40 inch fence. This fence is actually gonna end up being 30 inches tall because you have five inches of a climber barrier and five inches in the trench, which leaves 30 inches above ground. So you probably only need about 35 inches of wire. And the stitches, maybe two inches apart, three inches long. Pull it tight, feed it through back and forth. Probably take five minutes to do the whole, the whole splice. So there you go, and then you can tie it off at the, tight, at the top. Again, just check, uh, check the seams, make sure it's tight, nothing's gonna get through. And that'll do it. The other side of the fence here, this is the construction side. The climber barrier is, is folded away from us towards the uh, sensitive habitat, and uh, we're just taking a quick look at the uh, seam here, the overlap. That's what it should look like when it's finished. Uh, and that pretty much finishes the installation of this 40-foot section. Um, just want to mention that uh, E-Fence is available in orange also. It can serve as a uh, safety fence and, you know, uh, a safety construction um, perimeter fence as well. So you can do uh, exclusion, wildlife exclusion. You can do safety, safety barrier, uh, all in the same trench.